down, class. We have a very special lesson today. Today, I will tell you all about the killing game and its rules. Wait, what? Rule number one of the killing game. We don't talk about the killing game. Sayaka, are you all right? Rule number two of the killing game. Don't trust anyone. Not even you, Sayaka? Especially not me. Sayaka, it wasn't your fault. I'm still alive because of you, and you've taught me a lot. Makoto... Now get out there and take the stage. It's your turn. Yes, uh, let's get this going. Yep, it's that time, everyone. Everyone's idol, everyone's star, but the regrets are all hers. Welcome back everyone to TWD, the series in which your local idiot puts on the thinking cap for just long enough. I'm guessing many of you were surprised by the heavier tone of the opening, but that's because this entry, generally speaking, will also be darker in certain sections. That doesn't mean there won't be any humor in it. Look, Psyche's chasing Leon! I'm getting you this time, you fucker! The wall will have 1401 written on it this time, you bitch! But in all seriousness, this one will tend to be more serious than the others. Hopefully you guys will stick around to watch it no matter what. That being said, gather around, children, and let me tell you the tale of the ultimate pop sensation. Sayaka has become kind of a meme in the Danganronpa community. And while I laugh at all the memes regarding the first case of Trigger Happy Havoc, they... they hide a painful truth. And what's that truth? In my opinion, she's one of the most tragic characters in the first game. And yes, I do mean it. This isn't a lol psych you thought bitch sort of analysis. This is a wake up call to anyone who thought this character was just the memes. However, and directly contradicting myself already, I want to start with something else. Something a little bit more... lighthearted. Her introduction was, and still remains to this day, a fantastic moment in the series. A way of conveying to the player a sense of security, a sense of trust. Especially given that Makoto had met her beforehand. For the earliest parts of the game, she self-assigns herself the role of Makoto's assistant being the only person you could even talk to without feeling like a total bitch. I always left the conversations with her with a smile, because that's just the type of character she is. It's just like Makoto himself stated. Her smile had a mysterious calming power that always seemed to put me at ease. She was very much like a living doll, and for a good while, she was my favorite character of the cast. However, eventually the motive videos arrived. And there's an immediate tone shift. I call this the finest moment of Sayaka's whole character arc. Please, help me. Why? Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore. Sayaka. <gasps> This moment is incredibly emotional, but above that, it's also incredibly well written and smart, but we'll get to that later. And then we end with a freaking flagpole joke. God damn it, Monokuma! <sighs> that tone shift culminates in the real eye opener for the player. In any first playthrough, I imagine there might have been a great deal of players who thought Monokuma would have been over exaggerating when he meant, uh, you know, kill. But the night after Sayaka asks to switch rooms with Makoto, those people are dealt a rude awakening. It's one of the most iconic body discoveries in the series. And it started. The killing game has started. It's a massive bombshell that truly stands the test of time. Even after I know what's about to happen, I can't help but feel a little jaded by it. That, however, is nothing compared to what happens next. And this is what makes Saika go from a good character to a great character in my eyes.
Then the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. Do you smell that? It smells like... But no, it couldn't be... Betrayal? It's not what it looks like, I swear! You try to pin your crime plan on Egg Boy? Look at him! He's distressed! I'm distressed. But I didn't... I'm sorry. And that's the kicker. Kyoko puts it best herself. It's true. However, so No cold-bloodedness? Nope. No mastermind aspect? Nope. Oh my god, Saiga has a soul? <laughs> See, if she did evil without remorse, she would be a worse character. I stand by that. Hell, I'm taking that opinion to the damn grave. But the fact that she had enough remorse to name drop the killer to help Makoto Knowing he'd be the most suspected person makes her way more than one-dimensional. It doesn't mean that her actions are quite forgiven, though, but it does make you realize she's not heartless. She genuinely liked Makoto, but her desire to escape overcame that. And why? Well, this is where the real seriousness of this TWD settles in. Earlier in the game, we get a glimpse at what makes the ultimate pop sensation tick and a bit of her backstory, too. If you wish, there will be a timestamp on screen to when it's over, so you can continue the video. I... my dream is... I've always wanted to be a star. As long as I can remember. I grew up without a mother, you know? My dad worked really late every night. I was always home alone. I was just a kid, you know? So I was really lonely. She was so pretty! like a princess, and she could sing and dance. But more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking at her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. Eventually, that became my dream. I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it, even some things that, uh, weren't so pleasant. I honestly believed that as long as you kept chasing your dreams, someday they had to come true. But to do that, you can't even take your eyes off your dream, not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream, whether you're awake, whether you're asleep. To make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on it, no matter what. In that world, if you lose focus for even a split second, you get left behind. You have to keep on swimming against the current, without even taking time to breathe. That's the kind of world my dream lives in. Oh no! Don't get the wrong idea, it's super fun! It, that's exactly what scares me. I enjoy every single day I wake up and get to do what I do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but they all mean so much to me. We've been performing together since we were young, so they're all like family to me. Without them, I would have given up on my dream a long time ago. To work together and fulfill our dreams together has brought me so much happiness. But that's the thing that scares me the most. If the world gets tired of us, then what happens? 
what happens to us? Then the dream dies. Those wonderful days come to an end, and everyone goes their separate ways. So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. Well, they say that if you graduate from here, success is basically guaranteed. Which means I could keep on performing with my best friends, forever and ever. At least, that's what I thought. I really did believe that, but now we're trapped here, with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. While I'm in here, the world out there is forgetting about me! Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still, I can't afford to be stuck in here! At the time, I really didn't think this dialogue through. I was too focused on, well, the eerie factor. Seeing a usually super bright and cheerful character hit you with a reality check like it was a vibe check was pretty out of the blue. But now, it strikes me as pretty real. Sayaka, as a character, is scaringly real. Ask yourselves this question. What would you do for your dreams? How far would you be willing to go to protect what you've accomplished? And what if what you accomplished were your dreams? Put two and two together, everyone, and you have the two main points for Sayaka. The fact that she pursues her dreams to the last consequences, and the fact that she's the teacher of the series. Think about it, she teaches the player the most valuable lessons of this game. Don't trust anyone, don't get attached, the killer is you. I think that, for an introductory character, we couldn't ask for much more. A great way to open the series as a whole, in my opinion. But one that does not exempt Sayaka of her worst qualities. Allow me to begin this section by stating that you will never catch me calling Sayaka a snake other than for meme purposes. Yes, she's a backstabber, but being a snake is something far viler in my eyes. That being said, while this section will most likely be shorter than the previous one, well, it can't really be avoided, can it? So, remember the edit I did on the last TWD of Celeste stabbing the shit out of Hifumi? Replace Celeste with Sayaka, and Hifumi with Makoto, and... Yeah, you guessed it. You get the main plot of the first case. <sighs> you know, there is a reason this is memeable. All that I mentioned in the previous section holds up. Sayaka is a tragic character with a really sad backstory. But I'm sorry, this case is just a fucking joke. Now, now, I understand. It's the tutorial case and it's meant to be easy. I just think that... Well, a character like her deserved better. You might be thinking that this isn't a jab at the character directly, but oh, it most definitely is. Just give it a minute. Until then, though, let us talk about what happened in the case. Sayaka asks Makoto to switch rooms under the pretense of being scared of being killed in the middle of the night. By this point, she had made up her mind. Her dreams and her singing group meant more to her than Makoto would ever mean, so she had a plan to kill in mind. During the night, she manages to lure Leon into Makoto's room and attempts to kill him, only to have the plan backfire and have Leon kill her instead. And that's it. Now I... I'm also going to talk about this in Leon's entry, mainly because he was a much bigger idiot than Sayaka, but our singer girl also shares in the blame. First off, Leon? Fucking Leon? Sayaka, dear, you had a full cast of characters, and you immediately went to one of the fucking athletes! Why? Look around you! Hiro, Toko, and... Yeah, even my baby boy Chihiro. You really think they were worse options for what you wanted to do? <sighs> okay, fine, let's assume that she had hatred towards 11037, and that was her way to settle a potential grudge. Why? On Earth, did you think having anything in your surroundings that helped the victim would be smart? What am I talking about, you ask? Earlier, Makoto took this display store to his room, where Saika happens to be, as it so is. What did you think was gonna happen when you lunged at the victim with a motherfucking kitchen knife? Listen, all this to say that she didn't really think it through. 
And I get it, she wasn't thinking clearly at the time, and she also didn't know class trials were a thing yet. But even for those standards, it was a pretty poor plan. Maybe her hesitation made her commit the wrong choices, I just don't fucking know. Like I said, she deserved a better send-off. It's pretty unforgiving when you realize that the reason she was killed first was because the game devs were sick of her, given that her design was the basis for the rest of the female characters. They could at least, I don't know, make it a little more impactful. It says a lot when past the start of Chapter 2, Sayaka's killing is all but forgotten. I honestly think it should have held more importance. And because the case was such a joke, ultimately Sayaka's whole character arc is effectively thrown into the fucking shredder, where it should never have been. You know what would have been interesting? Makoto realizing that Sayaka was up to that, although it would ruin her teacher aspect, and seeing him try to help her throughout the game, to culminate in her standing beside him during the awakening from despair. That would have been fucking amazing. But no, let's just have Sayaka clowning on herself, much like Celeste did, and letting Leon hold the No You card until she's dead. That's much better. Yeah, I'm salty. This was my only real complaint, but as you can see, it took a good while to express. So before I lose what little patience I have left, let's switch to the conclusions, please. Well, I never thought I'd say this about a TWD, but it almost physically hurt me to do this one. Not because Sayaka's a bad character, but because it made me realize what we were robbed of just because the devs were sick of her. I honestly believe that she could have been so much more, even more so than Celeste. I mean, come on! You don't just create a backstory based on pain and sacrifice just to kill them off like that! It's so... unfulfilling! And in the end, it tastes sour. Really fucking sour. What do you think of that, Sayaka? Yeah, it's absolute BS, isn't it? Yep, couldn't put it better myself. It's funny, I think that for the first time, making a TWD made a character's position change in my overall ranking. For those who remember, Sayaka was number 9 in my original top 10. But now... I think she's a little higher. Now, on to the questions. Is Sayaka Maizono a good character? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Just done incredibly dirty. Much to my dismay. As for a second question, I think I got it this time. Is Sayaka underrated? It's tough to say, honestly. Yes, she's mean to Helen back, but I think people are beginning to realize that she's a lot more than the stupidity of the first case makes it seem. I'm here for it, everyone. And so is she. Thank you for voting for me, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching this new installment of TWD, everyone. Huge, huge shout out to this bill for doing the voice of Saika Maizono for this video. Go ahead and introduce yourself, friend. Oh, and if you can, give your brief opinion on Sayaka as a character, too. Hi, I'm Spilth, and I voiced Sayaka. That's all you need to know about me. But I really enjoy Sayaka. I think she's a very tragic character, and I hope that you guys enjoyed learning about her, too. So, uh, thank you. Bye! Thank you so much once again. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to her channel. You will not regret it, I promise. In any case, the poll for the next character will be in the description of the video, so make sure you make your voice be known and vote for who you want to see next. Other than that, I believe we're done here. Once again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. If you want to be notified of future uploads like this one, hit the little bell, you know what to do. Also, if you want to join my Discord server or follow my Twitch channel for more constant updates, link to both is in the description below. I believe that's all. Stay safe, and until next time, peace! Hi, Leaf. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I don't think he wants your voice in it. <clears throat> no, that is wrong.